You know, I've had a lot of feedback from subscribers on my floating shelf videos and on the strength tests that we've done on those videos. A number of you come with some great ideas on how to improve the strength of those. And so in this video, we're going to explore some of those ideas, come up with three test shelves, and then uh, put them to the test with 50 pound bags of concrete. I think you'll be surprised with the results. Some of you know I've been doing a lot of work with floating shelves in the last few months. If you don't, let me quickly bring you up to date. I did a job for a customer which included some floating shelves. Before, I thought they were a little bit gimmicky, but once I got into designing one, I realized that depending on how you built them, floating shelves can be pretty strong. So I did a few tests which led to another video on floating shelf strength, where a shelf made out of pine with oak dowels holding it to the studs ended up being able to easily carry 150 pounds and potentially quite a bit more. The reason I didn't test any further is because I mounted the shelf to the wall so high that I was worried about continuing to add more bags of concrete to that height. Because I didn't know what I would do when it actually gave way, I backed off and just broke the shelf off myself, ultimately by using my body weight leaning on the front edge of the shelf to make it snap. It was interesting that it was the pine backer against the studs that snapped, not the oak dowels. I had so many comments by many of you exploring the idea of floating shelf strength along with me that I took a few of your ideas and decided to try them out in this video. The first suggestion I picked up on comes from Extreme 2003, and he makes the point that potentially using a brand of screws called Timberlock might be a good way to attach the brackets to the studs. This is just a variation on using lag bolts. I'm going to incorporate his idea into two of the test brackets. My goal with this experimentation is to arrive at a quick and efficient way to build and install floating shelves that gives me the greatest strength for the shelf possible. I think using the Timberlock screws, which are used often for building exterior decks, is probably a very good method for achieving that. There will be three test brackets and all three will share the same basic construction methods. I'll use the Timberlock screws on the first two brackets to secure them to the studs. On the third bracket, I'm going to glue it to the studs using 3 quarter inch oak dowels. My go-to bracket for future installations will be the first bracket I built. And I'm referring to it as the regular bracket. Its construction looks something like this. Two pieces of 3 quarter inch oak are glued together to make up the back support. That laminated piece is then attached to the shelf support brackets with 3 quarter inch dowels. The next method I'm calling the dado method, and it's suggested by Just Bidness. In his comment, he goes into quite a bit of detail about his reasoning as to why this should be stronger. And to sum it up, if you're creating more surface area on the shelf support brackets to be glued to the back brackets, you should at least expect it to be a little stronger than just a regular butt joint. Now let me add that in all three cases here, I'm running dowels into the shelf support brackets from behind. It's very easy to do, and I actually prefer it to using anything else. The third idea is probably the coolest and yet most time consuming, but I have to agree with Fire Angel Londoner that it seems like it should be strong. I'm calling it the dovetail, and essentially what I did with it was I cut out little bow tie shapes in the top of the joint between the shelf support brackets and the back bracket, and then glued matching bow tie hardwood cutouts into those joints. Again, you would think that would make that joint stronger. So in this case, we have the dowel running through the back of the back support into the shelf support bracket, and then the bow tie is cut down three quarters of an inch into the dowel so that you have all kinds of wood grains going all different directions, all glued together in this joint. So we'll see how it performs. It may have too much going on to keep the joint strong, but we'll test it out. A couple of explanations before I get started. I have a quarter inch piece of melamine on top of the shelf bracket just to equalize the weight over the whole structure. I put a couple of screws in at the wall to keep the shelf in place. I'm also putting a block under at least the top shelf as I do the test to allow it to flex about an inch. That's primarily to keep me from dumping bags of cement all over the place, but also if this shelf is flexing that much, I'm considering it's reached a point of failure. The main difference between this test and the last one I did is, is a significant one. In the last test, the shelf was 12 inches wide 
That's a standard shelf width for most any residential uses. I'm making these shelves 15 inches wide, which will significantly increase the stress on the joints as I begin to load the concrete. The backs will be resting on the front edge almost as if they were on a diving board suspended on the shelf away from the wall. Finally, I remove the sheetrock from the wall to mount the shelves directly against the studs in order to take the sheetrock out of play. With the amount of weight that will be on the shelves, I found that the sheetrock will dent, and my primary interest is in testing the strength of the joints, so I don't want the sheetrock to affect the outcome of the testing. All right, ready to go on the test of this first shelf. In both cases of the regular shelf construction and the dado shelf construction, where the timber lock screws were used to connect the shelves to the studs, I got similar results. In both examples, the shelves flexed about an inch and a half with 150 pounds on them. You can see that's gonna just about do it right there. What was interesting, however, was that there was no damage to the glue joints connecting the shelf supports to the back bracket of the shelf. It appeared that the screws were flexing a little bit and the sheer force of the weight on the front of each shelf was actually creasing the face of the studs where the oak back bracket was resting. So we'll probably end up with the same, same thing happening on the shelf below. I want to make a quick modification to this second uh, shelf, which is the dado test. And I'm going to add a couple of washers to the heads of these uh, timber lock bolts. Hundred, there's my fifty. Yeah, I'm gonna rock this just a little bit and see if it. Yeah, I mean it's just more. Again, it's the uh, the flex of the bolt. It appears to be. Yeah, again, it looks like it's. Uh, I guess as when I pull this, we'll actually see. The bracket itself has, because it's oak hardwood, is actually pushing into the face of the stud and allowing it to, to have that amount of flex. But yeah, the joints seem to still be holding fine. I mean, they don't show any evidence of uh, being ready to break it off. So in both these cases, you can see that there's a actually a dent, pretty good dent in the face of the stud. So. Same way with the uh, the first one, and that cantilever effect that's going on uh, with the uh, the cement being out on the front edge is actually denting the studs. All right, and this is the uh, dovetail joint, and I did not use the screws on this. I went ahead and ran three quarter inch dowels into the studs. So this is go for broke time right here. This is gonna I'm gonna load it up with whatever it will hold, and we'll. See how much it can carry. Hundred pounds, a little creek. It's feeling that a little bit. 200 pounds, we dropped about another quarter. It's creaking, so it's like it's not liking it. I would think 250 would, uh, would wipe it out, we'll see. Definitely. All right, there we go. All right, so at 250 pounds, looks like the dovetails pulled out and maybe even the dowels themselves broke through the oak uh, in the back. The lower half of the oak back support bracket split away at the point where the dowels go into the studs and the dowels in the studs and back support appear not to be damaged at all. Here's an interesting comparison between the shelf that I broke by leaning on it with my body weight in the previous video and the break in the dovetail construction. 
Looks like the pine and oak are reacting similarly to the stress, but the oak handles more weight, even with the additional three inches of shelf width, which is not surprising. Finally, this is an interesting shot from the middle dovetail where the right side of it literally sheared off and remained in the joint. Shows that the glue is stronger than the wood grain. I decided to mount my go-to regular shelf with oak dowels to the studs and cut it back to 12 inches wide from 15 for one last hurrah. But I think I've learned all I need to know about the strength of floating shelves to help me make decisions about how to use them in my own future projects. I hope you gain some insight as well. Needless to say, these tests have been pretty extreme, but they do give me confidence that any of these three shelf designs probably give two, three, maybe four times greater capacity than you and I are ever going to need for our floating shelves. Curiosity's getting the better of me. Thanks for watching.